Good morning, mazel tov to our couples, and welcome to all of our students and families and guests who are here to join us on this very happy celebratory morning under this chuppah in this very sacred space on this very happy day. Every time we start a Jewish wedding, we start with a kind of Hebrew phrase of welcome, with which we welcome everyone who's here together at the chuppah, those who are getting married, and those who are here to celebrate with them. And the cantor begins us with those words. Bruchim abayim b'shem Adonai, berachnu chami beit Adonai, mi adir al hakol, mi baruch al hakol, mi gadol al hakol. Blessed are you who have come here in the name of God. We bless you in this sacred house of God. We rejoice that these loving couples have come together this morning to rejoin themselves together in the presence of God and these loved ones. O most awesome, glorious, and blessed God, grant your blessings to these brides and grooms. Friends, I want to take just a minute to make sure that everyone knows who the couples are that are in front of you. I want to share a word or two about all of them. We have four couples, and I want to introduce them to you one at a time. We're just going to go down the row, and I'll tell you a little bit about them. We have, let's see, Mr. and Mrs. Pasternak, right here on my right, on your left, have been married for 15 years. They have two kids, and a fun fact about the two of them is that Mr. and Mrs. Pasternak can be seen appearing in the same confirmation photo on the wall of the temple. <laughs> so, boys and girls, look at the people standing next to you now. You may be standing next to one of them under a chuppah someday, too. Mr. and Mrs. Rychek have been married for 11 years. They're the second one from my right, second one from your left. They have three kids, and they are delighted to be here rejoining themselves together on this bima. Mr. and Mrs. Madoff, right next to them, there they are. Two kids of their own. They have been married for 11 years. Mr. Madoff doesn't want you to know that he sustained an injury falling out of a chair when they lifted him up at his wedding. <laughs> so we'll keep that just as our secret, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, Mr. and Mrs. Rosalind have been married for 13 years. They have two kids, and I believe that they are joined by some members of their family who have traveled a very long way, all the way from New York, to be with them to re-celebrate this day that they reconnect under another chuppah. Brides and grooms, ladies and gentlemen, we are so pleased that you are with us this morning. Thank you for taking this opportunity to reconnect yourselves to each other and to the traditions of Judaism. 
At every wedding, we say a blessing giving thanks to God for having brought us to a time of celebration and having given us the gift of another day together. And so we'll continue with Shehekianu. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehekianu Bekiyamanu Behigianu Lazman Hazel We praise you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, for giving us life and sustaining us and bringing us to this most joyful day. At our Jewish wedding ceremonies, a very important thing that we do is that we sign our name on a ketubah. A ketubah is a document, as our students can tell you, in which two people who love each other write down the promises that they want to make to each other. They write down the commitments and the obligations that they are taking seriously by joining their names and their lives together in marriage. This morning, because we have four couples, we have four ketubahs, each of these very beautiful ketubas, I must say, have been designed and written by members of our fourth grade classes. It's also very important that a ketuba is signed not only by the people who are getting married, but by their witnesses, because we know that when people get married, we want them to be surrounded by other people, friends and community members who are willing to vouch and support for that marriage that they are creating. So for each of our classes, ketubas, we're gonna, ex we're gonna take signatures from brides and grooms and also from members of those classes that are there to serve as witnesses. And because we wanna make sure everyone knows what they're signing their name to and can agree to it, I'm gonna share with you now the words of these ketubas that our fourth graders have written. Ketuba number one. We promise to bring peace into our home by sitting together at the dinner table. We will make our home a Jewish one by having a tzedakah box. Wait, who says that? I don't know. Celebrating Shabbat every Friday night, having Jewish decorations, and putting a mezuzah on our doors, and by celebrating all Jewish holidays, even the little ones. We promise to bring peace into our home by embracing each other's thoughts and ideas and not to yell. We promise to bring peace into our home by staying quiet and not annoying people in our house. Mm -hmm. We will make our home Jewish by saying prayers on Shabbat, we will treat one another with respect by being kind. We will bring peace into our house by giving charity, by giving money to charity and being kind. We promise to bring peace into our home by not having any violence. So for our first ketubah, I want to invite, let's see, is this for anyone in particular? Let's see, I want to invite, let's see, I'm gonna invite the Rosalinds first to sign. And if we can have a couple of members of our class to sign as well as witnesses. Here we have two witnesses here, please. <laughs> so there's one of you can go here and one of you will go here. Beautiful. Okay, next. Thank you, witnesses. Okay. Our next ketuba. Our next ketubah says the following promises. We promise to bring peace into our home by being nice to everyone. We promise to bring peace into our house by not fighting and not cursing. We will treat each other with respect by caring for each other. We promise to bring peace into our home by eating dinner together. We will make our home Jewish by having mezuzahs. We will celebrate all the holidays necessary. <laughs> I promise to bring peace into our home by helping others with work and helping with big bags at the airport. I promise to always stay with my soulmate and appreciate being Jewish. Mr. and Mrs. Madoff, will you come and sign this one? And if I can have two witnesses from this class to sign, please. Signature. I like that. 
We're going to move over to this other side of ketubahs over here. For our third ketubah, we will make our home Jewish by celebrating Shabbat at home. We will treat one another with respect by talking at the dinner table. We promise to bring peace into our home by helping each other and bringing kindness into our house. We promise to bring peace into our house by showing kindness, being respectful, and having good manners. We promise to bring peace into our home by being loving and nice. We will make our home a Jewish one by having a mezuzah. We promise to bring peace into our home by not saying inappropriate words or calling bad names. We promise to bring peace into our home by listening to mom and dad, sharing with our siblings, and having nice manners at the dinner table, and helping people when they need help. Mr. and Mrs. Reichek, will you come and sign, please? And if we can have two witnesses from this class, please, to sign. Okay, we've got the pen that is right here. And here's, take that. Mm-hmm. Lastly, thank you. Our last ketubah says the following. We will treat one another with respect by always saying good morning every day. We promise to bring peace into our home by going on family vacations. We promise to bring peace into our home by talking about our issues to one another. We will make our home a Jewish one by celebrating the Jewish holidays. We will treat each other with respect by being kind to each other. We will make our home Jewish by following Jewish holidays and doing Shabbat. We will make our home a Jewish one by giving tzedakah to those in need and have Shabbat every Friday night and put mezuzahs on our doors and a sukkah in our yard. So, Mr. and Mrs. Pasternak, if you will please come and sign. And while they're signing, we'll invite our last two witnesses to come up and put their signatures on this last ketubah. Beautiful. There's some fantastic handwriting in this fourth grade class. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, friends. And now I want to add something else that our fourth grade students may not be aware of. You wrote such beautiful promises for these ketubas about how to make a happy, safe, peaceful home. But I want to share with you that I also talked to our couples because they've been married a little bit longer than you guys have. I asked them for their advice about how to make a peaceful home how to make a loving relationship, and how to make sure that a marriage works. So I want to share with you a little bit of advice that our couples have shared this morning about how to build a successful marriage. Mr. and Mrs. Madoff say that the best advice they have to offer is to embrace the craziness of life together, to remain a united front, which I think means do your best to agree when you can, when there's something hard to figure out together, and to laugh together as much as possible. And I think these two spend a lot of time laughing together. Mr. and Mrs. Roslin say, always work to open up your heart and to be vulnerable. That means let other people touch your feelings. It may mean that you might get hurt sometimes when you love somebody else. But if you're willing to risk being hurt and to be vulnerable and open and let each other touch your hearts, 
They tell us that you will share and experience such closeness and connection and love that no matter what happens to you, you'll get through it together. Mr. and Mrs. Pasternak's advice is that you shouldn't let the little things get in the way of your happiness. And they tell us that every day, they end their day by telling each other, I love you, no matter what. Our last couple, Mr. and Mrs. Rychek, had a very creative way of sharing their promises and their advice to us. It is four-part advice. Are you ready? <laughs> the first part is that you should learn from each other and accept that you can't change someone else even if you've lived with them for a very long time. You have to learn to work with the ways that you are different. So the first piece of advice is to learn. The second piece of advice is to stay open to each other, to be flexible and try new things with the someone that you love. The third thing is to validate each other. That's a big word and it means to understand and listen to each other. Imagine what things your partner is going through, things that make them happy and sad and the things that they struggle with. The last thing is to express yourselves, to share and communicate, talk to each other, say I love you when you're feeling love, speak up and tell the other person that you need help when you need help. So those poor, four pieces of advice, learning, openness, validation, and expressing yourselves, that gives us four letters, L-O-V-E, that spells love. Very well done. Overachievers, very, very good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask our couples to face each other. Friends in our fourth grade classes and people that are here, you'll see that our beautiful brides are wearing veils over their faces. You may have learned in your classes that the Jewish tradition about wearing a veil at a wedding comes from the story of our forefather Jacob. When he got married, he was supposed to marry the one he loved more than anyone else, Rachel. But when they got under the chuppah, it turned out that he was being married to Rachel's sister, Leah, by mistake. So there's this tradition that we want to make absolutely sure that we know the person who's standing with us under the chuppah. That is a very important Jewish story about getting married, but it's not a great story about weddings. <laughs> because it makes us think that we might not really know who it is that we're getting married to. So I would like to encourage our couples to do something a little bit different. Here's what I'm going to ask them to do. Now that they're facing each other, this story about the bedeckin, about the veil, and looking at the person that you are marrying under the chuppah <clears throat> is an important opportunity for both members of the couple to make sure and to affirm and to promise that they are sure that the person they're marrying is the one that they want. So here's what I'm going to ask our couples to do. Grooms, if you would please remove the veil. Flip it back, please. I'm going to ask... All the way back, there we go. And now, brides and grooms, if you would take just a moment to look into each other's eyes. You can hold hands if you want. I'm gonna take just a second to look into each other's eyes to make sure that the person standing opposite you is the one you want, to make sure that the one standing opposite you is the one you promised to spend your days with, to make sure that the one standing opposite you is the one that you want next to you through life's happiness and life's sadness, through your successes and your struggles. And if this is the one, if this one standing in front of you is the one that you want, the one that you confirm and affirm and promise to spend your days with, you can give me a nod and come back and face me once again. Now that these couples have affirmed <clears throat> that they are with the very right person in the whole world, we will continue with the blessings of our wedding ceremony. We continue with the blessing over wine. Every time we have a happy celebration, we'll say a blessing over grape juice or wine. As a way of symbolizing the celebration and the joy of this day, we have a cup for each. And students, if you, I believe that you know the tune of this kiddush, I'll invite you to sing along with me and with the cantor. Ready? One, two, three. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, 
You can take a sip if you like. Thank you. The next thing that happens in our wedding ceremony is the exchange of rings. It's a really important part of the ceremony. This is a way that Jews have been marrying each other ever since we were a Jewish people. And we do this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's important when you find the person that you want to spend your life with to show them, to give them something valuable, something important to show how serious you are about the agreement that you're making. The other reason that I really love is that every wedding ring is a circle. And it's an unbroken circle that goes around and around and around and around. And it reminds us that when you promise to spend your life with someone, you will be together even when things go up and down and around and around and you feel a little turned around sometimes. But that connection doesn't break and you stay together all through your lives together. So we have some very beautiful pieces of jewelry for our brides, for our grooms to present to their brides. It's not a complete circle, Rabbi. Huh? It's not a complete circle, but we'll imagine. Oh, very beautiful. Very, very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> this is rainbow sherbet. Okay. <laughs> beautiful. All right, so grooms, if you will place this beautiful, valuable ring on the finger of the one you have chosen and repeat these Hebrew words after me. Grooms, you're going to go first if you would repeat after me. Ani, ledodi, vedodi, li. Now in English, um, I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Beautiful, you may put the ring on there. And now, brides, if you would repeat after me. Ani, Le do di, ve do di, li. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Excellent. Those are very beautiful rings. They go beautifully with your outfits. <laughs> we will continue now with the seven wedding blessings. Our students have learned about the Sheva Brachot, these seven blessings we recite together only one time in Jewish life, and that's under the chuppah. We don't say these at the Shabbat table or on Yom Kippur or at the Passover Seder. We only say these together under a chuppah, and our cantor is going to lead us in these very beautiful blessings. So I need everyone's help for these, because at the end of each one, you guys are all going to need to sing Amen with me. It's going to be clear when it happens, so be ready, be paying attention. Some are short and some are long. Okay, so we start with a short one. Baruch atadunai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Amen Baruch atadunai Eloheinu melech haolam Shehakol bara lichvodo Amen Baruch atadunai Eloheinu melech haolam Yotzer ha'adam, Amen. Baruch atadunai Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher yatsar et ha'adam b'tzalmo, B'tzalem demutav nito, V'itkin lo mimenu binyan adehad, Baruch atadunai Yotzer ha'adam, Amen. Hostasis 
Shamechacha Yitzircha Began Eden Mikedem Baruch Atadunai Misameachatan, which is the groom, Bechala, which is the bride. Amen. Baruch Atadunai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher barasasson v'simcha chatan v'chala Asher barasasson v'simcha chatan v'chala Gila rina ditza v'chedva Ahava v'achava v'shalom v'reyut Me'eradunai Eloheinu Yishama be'are Yehuda Uvchutzot Yerushalayim, kol sasson ve kol simcha, kol chatan ve kol kala. Kol mitalut chatani mechubatam, unarimi mishten iginatam, baharu chatarunai, misamea chatan, which is the groom, im hakala, which is the bride, and we all say, Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Cantor. Thank you for those wonderful amens, fourth graders. And because you can never have too many blessings, our fourth grade classes have written some blessings of their own for these loving couples. One class, uh, one blessing from uh, Ms. Ms. Ney's class and one from Ms. Felicia's class. Our first blessing for these couples, thank you God for this sanctuary, this special day, these couples' happiness for our bodies that can talk and move and the good food we will have at the reception. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Our second blessing, thank you God for peace, love, happiness, family, friends, and living in a great city with great sports teams and good restaurants. Amen. Amen. All right, so couples, I'm going to invite you, Mr. Reichick, this may be a challenge for you, to step under the chuppah to come join us a little bit closer. You may have to duck a little. All of you come on in so that we can, the cantor and I want to offer you these words of blessings. We are this, morning, this morning's wedding ceremony is mostly to teach our fourth graders and their families about what a wedding is and what it does and what it looks like. But we want to take just a moment to offer you, for real, a blessing of well-being and peace and goodness. We are so pleased that you're here this morning. We're so pleased that you've chosen to rejoin your lives together to reaffirm the happiness that you share and to re-celebrate what it means to have chosen a life with someone you love more than any other. So the cantor and I want to offer you these words of the priestly blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May the light of God's countenance shine on you and be good to you. May God's presence always remain close to you. May you be blessed with the greatest gifts God gives, the blessings of wholeness and goodness and peace. Amen. Amen. Mazel tov. Well, friends, fourth graders and grown-ups and teachers alike, we have one more very important thing that happens at the end of every Jewish wedding ceremony. Couples, I want to invite you to step back out and find a little bit of stomping room for yourselves. Now, at the end of every Jewish wedding ceremony, there is a tradition of breaking a glass. There are a lot, I mean a lot, of explanations for why we do this. Some teachers tell us that we do this because we remember that Nothing is going to be perfect in anyone's lives, and so we start our wedded lives together with a moment of brokenness. Some people think that we do this to remind us of Jerusalem and of the temple that used to stand there but is now broken and doesn't stand there anymore. What I want to suggest, especially as these couples who have been married together for a total of 50 years together... What I want to suggest is that when we break these glasses this morning, we remember that choosing a partner 
is about choosing somebody that you think you want to help you when things get broken. Because as all of our couples can tell you, they have had some wonderful, beautiful, joyful times together, and they've also had some hard times. And what makes a successful marriage is finding someone to share it with that can help you and work together with you and lean down to pick up the pieces by your side when things get broken. And so, in just a moment, when these happy couples break the glass, and when you hear that crunching sound, and when we all yell mazel tov, and they might even share a smooch or two, when you hear that crunching sound, your job is to yell a really loud mazel tov, hold on, to yell a really loud mazel tov so we can fill this space with all of the joy and the hope and the happiness and celebration of people who love each other spending their lives together. Are you ready, couples? Are you ready, fourth graders? <laughs> Let's go. Mazel tov! How about a kiss? Friends, before we move, a couple of quick logistical announcements. Our classes and our loving couples are going to stay here for just a moment in the sanctuary so we can take some photos before we move to our reception in Feld Hall. I want to invite you all to stay with us and just be patient while we get a few pictures taken. A reminder that the first thing we're going to do in Feld Hall is a little bit of Israeli dancing, and after that we'll have a chance to enjoy some snacks and refreshments together. I want to say a couple of words of thank you before we move on. A lot of people worked really hard to make this day a success. First and foremost to our four couples, thank you all for giving us this morning and for choosing to renew your bond together and demonstrate to our students what it means to do a Jewish wedding and especially what it means to have a loving, successful marriage. To our amazing fourth grade teachers, Judy Ney, Felicia Pravada, Claire Lefkowitz, and Sharon Windham for all their hard work during rehearsals. To Emily Moses and Ellie Morse for their amazing work with our students in music and dance. To our amazing parent volunteers who put in time to make today work. And to the un induplicatable, indefatigable, irreplaceable Gail Shapiro. Woo! For all of her fabulous work behind the scenes, this wedding would not have been possible without you. Thank you, Gail. And Cantor Simmons, thank you for your beautiful voice. All right, folks, let's move into getting some wedding photos taken and get ready to celebrate.